This is Standing Watch. And now, Evangelist Norbert Link. Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to our Standing Watch program. Many of you who have been listening to our programs know that I, from time to time, talk about the downfall of the United States of America based on what your Bible tells you, that in fact, prior to Christ's return, a downfall is prophesied based on conduct here in this country. And some have misunderstood, perhaps, my motives and have concluded that I don't like it here, that I don't like the United States of America, and nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, I just came back from a visit to Germany, and I was shocked to learn about some of the rules and regulations which are going on there. And of course, that should serve us as a warning so that we don't go the same wrong route. I'd like to bring to your attention a few things which you might not be aware of. And um, here's one which is rather interesting. It talks about radio licenses fees. Now, we all pay perhaps a fee if we have internet or if we have uh, some other cable transmissions for the services which are provided us. But that isn't necessarily true over there in Germany. They have radio licenses fees which everyone having a home must pay, whether he has a radio or not. And that even goes for vacation homes. And the fees are rather heavy. It's 270 euros or so a year for every home. And there are apparently 800 or so lawsuits pending against this what they feel unconstitutional regulation because all the German states have come together and have made that decree. But to my understanding, nothing has been decided yet. Now, at the same time, you might have heard, and perhaps you haven't heard, about so-called environment plaques, which they have over there for cars. And they have three different colors. It's a green color, and then they are talking about, and I have it here in front of me, a orange color and a red color. And every car is getting one of these plaques in many of the cities. And unless you have a green plaque, you can't go into the city because the car apparently is too old, so they say, and it all has to do with the environment and with pollution and with emission and all that. But of course, what it does is it forces people, specifically older people, specifically less fortunate people, to either get rid of their cars and buying a new one, or to get the cars up to speed, which is probably too expensive and too cost prohibitive. Now, when I was over there in Germany, I saw all these plaques and we went into Mannheim and suddenly I saw this sign saying, okay, you cannot go into there unless you have a green plaque. And so people who have cars, which don't qualify for those plaques. They have no choice but to just leave the car where it is outside the city, then they go into the city with public transportation or whatever they're going to do. Now, again, these are things which are hard to believe in the United States of America that something like that would happen, but it gets even worse. Now, they have a garbage disposal system over there, and I have an article here which is referring to one particular city, and now they have brown and gray and green garbage cans. And every garbage can is designated for certain things. One, you can only put papers in. Another, you can only put things in pertaining to babies. A third one, you can only put in, you know, whatever garbage there might be. When it comes to bottles, of course, they need to be, they have to be recycled. You can put them in into any garbage can. And so everything is being terribly regulated over there. Now, you may shake your head in unbelief, but then let's not be too quick because, you know, if you think at, let's say, Obamacare and some of the regulations which came through there, where we are being forced to buy insurance, whether we want it or not, and where we are being forced to take insurance, which gives us certain benefits we don't even need, you know, it gets closer and closer to this kind of dictatorial procedure which you find, for instance, in Europe. Now, what I found interested, interesting is a warning 
in 1 Samuel chapter 8, when Israel came and said they wanted a king. And Samuel warned them what the king would do. Now, we know, of course, we don't have any kings at this point in the United States of America and not in many European countries, but just apply it to a president, just apply it to a chancellor, just apply it to a prime minister in principle and their governmental staffs. And here's what you find in 1 Samuel chapter 8, beginning in verse 11. Samuel said, this will be the behavior of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for his own chariots and to be his horsemen, and some will run before his chariots, and he will appoint captains over his thousands and captains over his fifties, and will set some to plow his ground and to reap his harvest, and some to make his weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. So many today are going to war for the country, or they are working for the country in one way or another, have to pay taxes, of course, because it goes on to say, he will take your daughters to be perfumers, cooks, and bakers, and he will take the best of your fields, your vineyards, and your olive groves, and give them to his servants. And he will take a tenth of your grain and your vintage and give it to his officers and servants. And he will make your male servants, your female servants, your finest young men, and your donkeys, and put them to work. And he will take a tenth of your sheep, and you will be his servants. Now, in many cases, in principle, that is exactly what we are having already. And so we got to be very astute that looking at things which are happening, let's say, in Germany or in Europe, that we don't in this country see the same tendencies developing and not even speaking about dictatorial countries like Russia or China. You see, when you're thinking about Europe and you hear about the European unification, you might have the misimpression that it's something like what we have here in the United States where let's say I can go from one state to another state and I can buy all kinds of things in one state and bring them over to another state and I don't have to pay customs for it. It's totally leg legit to do that. And I was under the misimpression, to be honest, that in fact that was the same insofar as at least the European member states are concerned. And I was quite surprised to find out that isn't the case at all. In fact, if you go, let's say, to Luxembourg, and you buy certain things, and then you want to bring it over to Germany, you're only allowed to do that up to a certain amount. And otherwise, you have to pay a fine, or worse yet, they just confiscate everything from you, and you still got to pay a fine. Now, that applies to certain articles. One is, of course, cigarettes and tobaccos. Now, of course, just to say that, that you shouldn't buy anyhow, because you shouldn't smoke. Smoking is very bad, not just for you, but also for others. And you hear about secondhand smoke, and now you even hear about thirdhand smoke. Now, if you are a Christian, if you want to love your neighbor as yourself, you're not going to smoke for his benefit as well as for yours. But nevertheless, if you buy, let's say, cigarettes over there in one country, bring it to another country, you have to pay quite a bit, or you are only allowed to bring in a certain amount. The same is true for alcohol. Whatever alcohol you bring in, whether it's beer or wine or other strong drinks, you can only bring in a certain amount, otherwise you have to pay custom. And of course you have to declare it. Coffee is another one. I have a list here, what you can bring in, and you cannot bring in more than a certain amount. Gasoline. I mean, if you go to another state, or another country, I should say, and you want to bring in gasoline, you can't do that. You can only fill your car, and you can have a little bit extra, but that is it. And if you have more than what is allowed, then you are in big trouble. And so again, these are kind of regulations which make you wonder about how unified Europe will ever be. And it brings to mind a prophecy in the book of Daniel. You know, in Daniel chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and he saw this famous statue. And I just want to read it to you, beginning in verse 31. Because here Daniel is explaining to Nebuchadnezzar, first of all, what he dreamt, and then he explains the interpretation. You, O king, were watching, and behold, a great image. This great image, whose splendor was excellent, stood before you, and its form was awesome. And this image's head was of fine gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. And you watched, while a stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image on its feet of iron and clay, and broke them in pieces, and then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, the gold were crushed together and became like chaff from the summer threshing floors, and wind carried them away so that no trace of them was found. 
and the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. And then he explains to Nebuchadnezzar the meaning of the dream, and he talks about the fact that there are going to be four kingdoms, and the fourth kingdom will have, in fact, if you go back now to the book of Revelation, ten revivals, ten resurrections. We have a booklet prepared, the ten revivals of the European Empire, or this says the ten revivals, the ten European revivals of the ancient Roman Empire, but it's talking about the ten revivals of the European Empire, if you please, the ancient Roman Empire, and if you want to have a copy of this free booklet, please write us, we're happy to send it to you. Because the fourth kingdom, the Roman Empire, that ancient Roman Empire, would be revived ten times, and here's what Daniel says to Nebuchadnezzar, that the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron, inasmuch as iron breaks in pieces and shatters everything, and like iron that crushes, the kingdom will break in pieces and crush all the others. But then he drops down to the last resurrection of that Roman Empire, what we are seeing today in Europe. It says, And whereas you saw the feet and toes, partly the potter's clay and partly of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. Yet the strength of the iron shall be in it, just as you saw the iron mixed with ceramic clay. And as those toes of the feet were partly of iron and partly of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly fragile. And then he goes on to say that Christ, that rock, will come down to smash the toes, as Christ will return and there will be ten nations or groups of nations in Europe. They will have united. They will give their power and their authority to the beast, a charismatic political military leader, and they will all try to fight Christ. But you see, these ten nations, and that's the point I'm trying to make here now, are not as closely united as we might think when we think in terms of even the United States of America. It's partially strong and partially weak, partially fragile. It goes on to say here in this particular verse in Daniel chapter 2 and verse 43, And as you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not adhere to one another, just as iron doesn't mix with clay. And when they exist, then Christ will come back to restore and establish the kingdom of God here on this earth. So we should not even expect a very mighty, mighty powerfully united United States of Europe, so to speak. Now, militarily, they will be very strong. They will have their united army. But then they will give their power and their authority, whatever power and authority they have, they will give it to the beast, that charismatic military leader. And he is the one who's going to lead them. And then you will have a unification in its fullest sense of the word. So what we are seeing even here when it comes to these custom regulations, it shows that they are not as united as we might perhaps think. And so we should watch the news very carefully, and we should also be very thankful that we are living in the United States of America where we still have freedom. But we should be careful and we should be watchful because we are seeing more and more how our individual freedoms are being taken away from us as well in this country. And let us see that very clearly and let us also understand that God is not amused and he is not happy about this. So thank you very much for listening. This is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program. Standing Watch is a presentation by The Church of the Eternal God, P.O. Box 270519, San Diego, California, 92198. More information is also available at our website, eternalgod.org.